People say sleep is a food for your brain. But does Barstow students get enough sleep? In this piece, we're going to explore the sleep deprivation and how this affects our everyday life and health. Sleep deprivation, uh, in my definition, same definition that anybody would expect to use, you don't sleep enough. Now that's not just a matter of not getting enough hours of sleep. You can be in bed and be presumably asleep for quite a long time, but if you're not getting restful sleep, like good sleep, then that's also sleep deprivation. My name's Adam. Let me tell you about my schedule. So usually I wake up around like, I don't know, 6.30 or so, so I can get up, get around, maybe knock out a little homework I didn't do the night before. Then, you know, go to school just like any other day. Then now, since I'm doing the play, I've got rehearsals from 3.30 to 8.30, get home around 9.30, wake up in the morning, I'm still extremely exhausted because just the schedule day after day, day in and day out, just doesn't, doesn't do you any favors. After meeting Adam, we wanted to learn more about the sleep itself. So we decided to visit an expert. There are actually four stages of sleep followed by the fifth stage, which is called REM sleep. Stage one sleep is the lightest sleep. It's one where uh, a person just starts to fall asleep. They can be woken up, but they never reach a very deep level of sleep. Uh, followed by um, level two, which is slightly deeper. And then of course, levels three and four, which are deep sleep. The thing with levels one through four is during none of those levels of sleep does a person dream. Dreaming really takes place during what's called REM sleep. REM in a biological sense, it is the level of sleep that we go into when we dream. It's also the level of sleep where we must reach in order to stimulate certain parts of the brain that enhance our thinking and our reasoning and our problem solving skills. And if we do not ever reach this deep level of sleep, that can significantly impair these functions of the brain. So, what is the relationship between sleep deprivation and executive functions of the brain? And memory and attention, those are things that sleep deprivation fairly clearly reduce in the brain. Students learn better, they perform better, they get work done more efficiently, and they remember more. That's really important. They remember more if they are not sleep deprived. You know, when I'm sleep deprived, I definitely um, I definitely have to push myself with more of a an eye toward mental toughness to make myself be able to produce the kind of work I want. So I definitely, my memory's not as good, um, and my efficiency is not as good. So, are Barstow students sleep deprived? According to the National Sleep Foundation, teenagers are supposed to be getting about 9.2 hours of sleep at night. Get about four hours of sleep. Usually about six and a half or seven. I get about four. I get about five hours of sleep. You know, six. Uh, I get about five to six hours of sleep. Well, yesterday I got one hour of sleep, but that's because uh, our research university today and I procrastinated on that. Six hours. Sleep is kind of a waste of time. A uh, recent study that they did showed that only 15% of teenagers sleep as much as eight and a half hours per night. So if Barstow is anything like the national average, Barstow students are indeed sleep derived. Yeah, the modern world. I think, I think our culture um, actually promotes um, being really busy and being sleep deprived. First of all, you have to make it a priority. You have to actually schedule sleep into your schedule. Don't make it something that you do when everything else is done. Make it a priority that you will get enough sleep. Yeah, you just gotta say no to people. You can look out for things like your diet. If you uh, drink a lot of caffeine or eat spicy food or simply eat or drink right before you go to sleep, you will not rest as well. If you are working until you pass out, if you are on the computer, if you're texting, if you're watching TV right until the very moment that you sleep, you will not sleep as well. Uh, what I like to tell students about um, how to sleep better at night 
is to get into a routine. So my advice to you is to learn how to harness the energy of a 10 minute power nap. That's how I got through college. Seeing anything that's relaxing right before bedtime is helpful to get to sleep quickly. You just have to time manage, you have to figure out what is important, do that first. Um, have a little fun, you gotta have a little fun, and then you really do have to protect your time and say no to people so you can get some sleep. Of course, there's super busy times, like if you're in the rehearsal mode right now for the play, yeah, it's just really tough and you just have to try to get through it. I know you all have lots of homework to do and lots of activities, and that's wonderful, but if you could put sleep up higher on your priority list, um, your days will go better, your studying will be more efficient, and you'll just generally feel better and happier.